Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're back. Another exciting podcast of the Mythicus Podcast. I'm here with my friend Greg Prescott. What's going on, man? Hey, brother. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so we had to work out some bugs. I think we're back. I think we're good. Yep. Um, just to let everybody know, we've never talked before. This is organic. This is the first time getting to talk to you, man. So excited to have you on the show. Been hearing about you for years, running kind of in the same circles. We mentioned Kelly in the Raw. You know, that's a, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a mutual friend. Um, mm -hmm. Seeing some of the content that you've been putting out with N5D.com and this huge esoteric, metaphysical, spiritual database that you guys have built over the years. And it's kind of, like if you're searching terms about spirituality, uh, third eye meditation, your site comes up. So it <laughs> definitely is a, a database with a wealth of knowledge there. And so I've been reading some of the articles for years. So it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Finally get a chance to talk to you, man. Welcome. Thank you, brother. So to talk a little bit about the topic, it's kind of hard to pick a topic of like a title for the show before we do it. <laughs> Like afterwards, you can kind of go back and say, okay, we talked about this. We talked about that. We, and so we got to kind of get a name for the show that's going to get people or whatever. So mm -hmm. I picked the name um, talking about explaining dimensions because in 5D, which is your, your, your head or your vision, right? It's talking about the fifth dimension, right? Yes. And I told you through chat on Facebook that like, I, I definitely understand the different levels, but it gets, you know, second, third, fourth, fifth. Some say it goes to 11th. Some people say it goes to thousands, right? Of these different levels in dimensional planes of existence where beings exist in different vibratory levels, um, consciousness that we can go there, that we're, that everything that we do, we're affecting those levels as well. And so I believe that would be a good place to start, man, talking about the different dimensions. Okay. Well, starting out, you know, if you think of the first dimension as just being a straight line, that's it, a line, okay? Real simple. The second dimension, you can look at putting four lines together to make a box, okay? But it's just four lines together. It has no depth or space. That's where we go into the third dimension where you have the box, but it has depth, a third dimensional box, a cube. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. The third dimension is basically the way I see it is thought, emotion, and effort will bring you manifestation. Okay. So it takes the effort, the extra effort. And we're starting to see that right now. You know, the more you put into your thoughts and intentions, the more you can manifest, but it's the thoughts, the effort, the emotion uh, to, that it takes to manifest things. Um, I, have you watched the secret? I have or read the book. Definitely. Yeah. It's huge. I mean, it's everything. If it wasn't for the secret, in yeah. 5D wouldn't exist. Okay. Um, I know that I watched the video one time, and uh, on the video, it, it said that there was um, this guy. They showed this guy going out to the mailbox, and he opens up the mailbox, and he pulls out all these bills, and he's shaking his head. He applies the, the secret, which for those who aren't familiar with uh, that are listening right now, right now it's, it's the law of attraction. And uh, so what you put out there to the universe comes back. So what he was doing initially was he, he's going out to the mailbox and he's thinking, oh my God, there's going to be bills here and everything. Of course, that's what he manifested. So he applies the, the law of attraction and he goes out to the, to the mailbox and all of a sudden, instead of bills, he's getting checks. And I'm shaking my head. I'm thinking, you know, that, that'll that never happen. But as it turned out, it, it it's what happens. It's what's happening with me right now. All my yeah. bills are being paid online. And, you know, whatever I receive in the mail are checks. Um, so and there was another example that they gave. And this one, anyone who knows me uh, can attest that, uh, about this. They gave the example of going out to a parking lot and envisioning that your parking spot is available yeah. and waiting for you. Yeah. And uh, what I do is I envision that three spots are available <laughs> and they're always the best spots. That way I'm getting one of them. And one of the spots I go to is at this little beach here in, in Florida called Crescent Beach. And it only fits about 25 cars. So I envis envision the first three parking spots being available. And I could go there at 
perhaps, you know, 12 o'clock on a Saturday. And I know that somebody's pulling out as soon as I'm pulling up and that spot's going to be available for me. I've taken so many pictures of getting that best spot on any particular day. It's just, it's mind boggling. So this is where we're at right now. We're heading into the fourth dimension where you still have the thought and emotion, but the effort is no longer needed. You're just manifesting. So when I go to this parking lot, I know that those spots are going to be there. The effort is, is, is not even non-existent. So we're merging right now into the fourth dimension and subsequently into the fifth dimension where you still have thought and emotion, um, but, and, and manifestation, uh, but you, no, excuse me, in the fifth dimension, you just have thought and manifestation. The emotion's gone. So your thoughts equal the manifestation. Okay. Um, and then when, when you go into 60, it's instant manifestation. And then from 70 on, who knows, like you said, it could be 12 dimensions, nine dimensions, 2,120 okay. dimensions. So, Who knows after so, that? so whenever you're speaking about these dimensions, these are mm -hmm. levels of consciousness that we can walk on. Is this what you're talking about? Well, there, there are dimensions that I consider, um, perhaps I, what you're saying is you can walk on, on them. Oh, uh, well, I I'm guess... just talking about just in your consciousness, like, okay, I'm vibrating at third dimension right now and this is where my faith level is this is where my belief is things are coming to me there is no effort and th that's what you're talking about right that this right. is something we can attain yeah oh, definitely okay. definitely right now um and what i do I, as a matter of fact we just had a conference here in sarasota a uh, psychic conference and i spoke about how to uh, open up your third eye i have an article on uh in 5d about that as well as a youtube video on the n5d youtube channel anyone can open up their third eye and a week or so I, I give them a maximum a week and your third eye will be open but it takes that effort and what i'm finding is a lot of people aren't they don't have the time you have to start it's, with the effort though not, it's not that they're not necessarily willing to put the effort in it's just they don't have the time to put the effort in yeah i found what it seems like man is like there's a negative force out there some type of ill will that that wants to make you busy i don't know if it's the ego and it's it's manifesting like this is the part of your trial that you have to kind of prove yourself to get to to make sure that you want it to make sure that you want to get out of the slump to get there but a lot of people man that busyness is crazy i can mm -hmm. attest to it in my life of, of being at these different levels of vibration where synchronicities are happening happening uh, angelic contact is happening uh just everything's beautiful and then you fall into a slump where like you manifested all this stuff and then all of a sudden it's gone and you're depressed mm -hmm. and like wow what happened like i'm not there anymore so it is this battle to stay there to walk there can you talk a little bit about that definitely what happens is that every second every minute you're controlling your own destiny and what's happening is there's going to be these setbacks but what universe is trying to tell you is that okay, time to readjust, time to head in a different direction. Understand what's happened up until that point, and then understand, see what happened and where it's leading you, because you're constantly getting signs yeah. uh, that are pointing you in, in, in a different direction and where you're supposed to be at all times. So, you know, just keep listening to the signs. Look for signs outside, you know. Yeah. Perhaps a, uh, a, a flock of crows will fly over you, and the crows are very metaphysical. A spiritual animal or a flock of hawks or whatever you know look at all the signs that are going on and see where that those signs are, are leading you because every day you're being pointed to your true divine purpose for being here there's a lot of people who look at themselves and i've been there too i'm saying from experience where they look at themselves in the past and they say like i wish i was as spiritual as i used to be or i wish i was as close to god as i used to be and so their memories of their past outweigh their current experiences and hinder them and almost plague them. Like, man, I used to be so happy. I used to be this. I used to be that. Um, and people want to go back there. But I was talking to some brothers today, and it's kind of like, don't try to go back there. Because if you was to go back, you would uh, almost neglect everything that you've learned from that point to where you are today. So learn from all of the mistakes and all of the setbacks and the things that got you off course. Learn from that stuff to build a better tomorrow and manifest tomorrow, right? Um, 
what would you say about that when people just look at their past and like, man, I was I was spiritual a year ago. I mean, I've I've done it too, man. I've you know, I I went through this crazy depression. I cut my hair off, man. I had long hair and dreadlocks and there was that those articles about the the spirituality linked to the hair, dude. Like I felt something when that happened, man. I kind of went through a little slump myself. Can you speak on that? Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, what Dolores Cannon talks about is one of the things that is the easiest thing to do, but we overlook so often, and it's the power of forgiving. Uh, forgive yourself for anything that you've done in the past that, that may have not been in your, your own best interest or humanity's best interest. We've all made mistakes. None of us are angels uh, here on this planet right now, but uh, we've all made our mistakes. Learn how to forgive yourself, love yourself, and uh, realize that it's a university basically, you know, and we're yeah. here to learn and grow from it. You know, the Rosicrucians have a saying that your goal in life is not to be happy. Happy happiness is an emotion. Your goal is to experiment experience as much as you possibly can. And within those experiences, you'll find happiness. So I always thought that that was a really interesting way of looking at life. So just get out there and, and, and enjoy life. More importantly too, uh, ground. A lot of people have a hard time finding the time to ground themselves. You know, living here in Florida, it's quite easy because it's beautiful out all year mm -hmm. round. You know, the change of seasons are highly overrated as far as <laughs> I'm concerned. Uh, <laughs> give me summer every day of the year, but I can go out there and be barefooted. Yeah. You know, even if you, you live in the Northeast or Northwest or if you're in snow or whatever, find time to get out there and appreciate the nature that's going on. You don't have to be barefooted for that. You can still sun gaze. You can yeah. get out there, bundle up if you have to, you know, get out there and appreciate nature, the snow that's falling and uh, where you're at, because everyone is exactly where they need to be right now. We're all anchoring down the energies. And it's kind of like, you know, if you have like little spots of light all over the planet, cumulatively, we light up the planet. So everyone is anchoring the energy and is exactly where they need to be right now. That might change a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. But right now, you're exactly where you need to be. Keep mm -hmm. holding that light. I believe that, man. I believe that when I start to get frustrated about, uh, you know what I'm saying, circumstances and, and situations. But like, you know what? I'm right where I want to be. There's a scripture in the Bible that says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord, right? And I believe that no matter where we go, like if it's good or bad or we're going through troubled times, man, I believe that there's a lesson in it all and that we could try to make the best out of it, right? Versus, you know, <laughs> playing the other side where we could just, you know, just get discouraged and, uh, you know, disgruntled and, and hurt and things like that. And mm -hmm. we st start to relive the hurt and they, you know, thought forms come in our mind and get and get planted and become strongholds and things like that so really to fight against that stuff and stay vibing at those high levels man like but what's what helps keep it consistent i know you said grounding is a is a is a big thing what what are some of the things too like the spiritual practices such as like meditation and and and, and you, know, you know sun gazing like you said as well mm -hmm. well it's funny you mentioned that um i have a meditation pyramid over there i should turn around my uh, computer to show you uh, my my dog is underneath it right now <laughs> he's chilling That's yeah awesome. yeah he's he's hanging out there and yeah. uh yeah he loves my meditation pyramid He's looking back at me right now. But uh, that's one thing that I find is, you know, it's funny too, because there's, there's, a, uh, there's a picture on the internet. If you type in pyramid and deer, somebody had a meditation pyramid out in their backyard and a deer just innately understood the energy of that pyramid, the copper pyramid, went out and laid down. And there's a picture of a deer just laying down in the pyramid. Now I've got this pyramid here. My dog is constantly underneath it. These animals know the energy. They, yeah. they sense the energy. They feel a calmness that's underneath there. So, and I feel it as well when I, when I meditate under it. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to have. Um, What's it made out of? Copper. Copper, yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, it costs maybe, I don't know, $150, something like that. But it was worth every penny. Um, that's one, one of the things I do. Uh, I also get out. I like, I'm, I'm fortunate. I live two miles from the number one beach in the United States. And uh, I like getting out there. And what I do is a walk of gratitude. And I walk down to the end of the beach and there's a seawall at the end of the beach. And that's my reminder to give thanks. And the first thing I do is say, I'm sorry if I don't say this enough, please forgive me. It's basically called Ho'oponopono. 
and it's four tenets to it. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. So I go through my posse is what I call them, and that's creator, source, universe, spirit guides, guardian angels, friends and family on both sides of the veil, galactic neighbors and friends, higher self, mother earth, and my spirit guide, Tamara, specifically. Uh, but I go through it and I express you know, what I'm thankful for and tell them all that I love them. And I, I thank them for uh, their unconditional love, safety, protection, guidance. And I promise to listen with uh, open ears, mind, eyes, and heart um, to their guidance. And uh, every day I'm listening. So I do that. And then on the walk back, what I do, see, it's kind of funny because I work every day. I haven't had a day off since 2009. And uh, I work probably between 10 to 12 plus hours every day. So I have to force myself to go to the beach to ground or else I'm going to be out of balance. Now, yeah. I'm also a Libra. I'm a triple Libra. And a lot of people think that Libras are all about ba balance. It's the exact opposite. We're constantly <laughs> seeking yeah. balance. So I'm, that's why I have to force myself to go to the yeah. beach. So on the walk back, from the seawall, I do what I call a love bubble meditation. And what that is, is that I env envision this ball of energy around me and everybody that comes within my, my, my energy field is receiving unconditional love and healing. And I ask my posse, you know, creator, source, universe, spirit guides, guardian angels, right down the line to magnify that effect from my heart and their hearts and ex expand it out as far as they can throughout the planet, galaxy, universe, and multiverse. Because every thought is energy. And if you're putting that thought and energy out there, it's got to be doing something to help the, the critical mass and the collective um, evolution of human uh, humanity. What what um levels would you be vibing at at that? Is that I mean, can you do that at, you know, second and third? Or is it or is that if, if you're doing that daily, you're probably walking in 5D? Well, I, I'm, I, I'm actually doing that probably in third and fourth dimension. Okay. Because the thoughts manifest quicker and quicker. So I'm putting that out there. I'm also doing something, too. While I'm on my walk, I'm telling myself that all my codons are open in my DNA. My DNA is activated and that I, I can do anything. So I'm working on – we only have 20 of the 64 codons in our DNA turned on. So there's 44 codons that are turned off. If somebody can figure out how to turn on all the codons in their DNA – they can do anything. You can manifest out of thin air. You, you can uh, tele teleport, telekinesis, every ability known to mankind, and then some would be available to that person that can figure out how to turn on all the, their codons in, in their DNA. I do have some videos and a couple articles on in5d.com that show what I'm doing to do that. Uh, there's a number of things I've been doing. I've been, been working on it for probably two or three years. And, uh, I, I'm seeing some results, but I'm not seeing, you know, my, I, I can't make myself invisible. I can't regress in years yet, even though, you know, I turned 60 <laughs> in a few years. So it's kind of hanging in there. You look great, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, so definitely with doing that, there have been people reportedly who have been able to do that reportedly, especially like if we're talking about some of the masters as far as like, Jesus and Baba G, you know, Krishna, these type of people, they've definitely um, tapped into that, correct? Well, I, I, I guess so. <laughs> you know, that I can't, I can't prove that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and well, if they're walking own. in, you know what I'm saying, miracles and manifestation like that, I mean, wouldn't that be kind of what you're talking about? I guess uh, proverbally, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, it would be. But, uh, you know, I, I've, um, I, I, I'm not a Christian and I have my questions about the Jesus story, but I, my parents are Christians. I know lots of yeah. Christians. I, I'm I just using it as an example. We can yeah. name, we can name all the masters and I yeah. don't know them all. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, you know, the angels, the masters, whoever, like these, I'm just speaking about people who existed, who mm -hmm. are walking in manifestation and miracles on yeah. the earth. Right. I, I'm sure that that's happened throughout the years. And you know, now is the time, so they say, that for these masters to come back. But ultimately, I think, like the hope you said, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Why can't we do that? Mm -hmm. I think it's the time where our, we can figure out how to turn on our DNA. As a matter of fact, there's a really interesting thing that happened this past week. 
apparently uh, there's this huge wave of gamma rays that are, are, are coming and that are expected to arrive on December 26th. According to James Gilliland, he said that gamma rays are seventh dimensional energies that will help transform human consciousness. Now, just in the past couple of days or so, there's this, uh, it was posted by BP Earthwatch and Dabu7 on YouTube about this other, a, a different wave of energy. Uh, a Dutch Sense also had, had, has a video on it. This wave of energy is covering the whole planet. And Dutch Sense said that he's never seen anything like this before. And you can see this literal wave of energy that's, oh, wow. that's coming over the planet. And it, it really coincides with this dream I had about these three tidal waves of that, that are coming to the planet. But it's really tidal waves of energy. It's not water, mm -hmm. is, which yeah, is my yeah, interpretation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, you know, a lot of people are talking about these waves of energy, and uh, you know, I've seen the future, and it's amazing. And it does involve these, these waves that are coming in. Something good versus something bad, right? They always give you the dates with all the bad stuff's going to happen every year, but nothing happens, you know? So it's awesome that now we have something good to look forward to. That's always exciting. Yes. Because what what it does, like, even in the placebo effect, right? Even if there was nothing significant about that date, even if nothing happened, the mm -hmm. expectation for you to kind of put yourself in expecting something to happen and, go, and kind, of, kind of preparing, getting yourself ready, to receive okay let me make sure that i'm dealing with my past junk everything's good i've forgiven my enemies i'm walking in love you know all, all of these things so i think that this expectation for something like that to happen will just by placebo alone help people i mean i, th I believe that's what, how you know faith works and belief works when if we're praying for somebody or believing for somebody to be healed of an ailment it's you know even though the, the symptoms are there they seem to be sick that we believe and we see the things that are not as though they were and we and that's how we manifest it mm -hmm. through through thought through through prayer through um expectation there's so much power in expectation i mean even even i think i think even with your conferences and stuff right people mm -hmm. are coming expecting like expecting an impartation they want to be around you th this type of things and, and like you know, show me your friends. I'll show you your future. Once you're hanging around somebody, you begin to talk like them. You begin to act like them. You pick up on their mannerisms. And this stuff is, is contagious, man. It is. It really is. You know, you, if you, it, I, I highly suggest that, you know, be yourself no matter what. Because what's going to happen is you're going to weed out those who don't accept you for being who you are. Now, a, a lot of people know this already, but before... I was a webmaster. I was a child and family therapist. I uh, have a patent pending that I wrote that's designed to help families who are at risk of dissolution, children going through the reunification process, and for parents in need of parenting classes. And I was doing this um, full time on my own. I had my own business, and uh, I wrote a program that was accepted by the area's largest human services facility. Oh wow! I was doing that for the longest time, but I started doing. I started getting into spirituality when i started learning about the um the mayan calendar and this was back in 2007 and what a lot of people and i the more i the, when i first read about the mayan calendar of course i saw the doomsday websites and i thought oh my god you know my daughter's only going to be you know yeah. 17 in 2012 or whatever the number worked out to be and it's the end of the earth world and all but you know the more i i researched that the more i realized it's not the end of the world so what i did was i i put all these videos together uh in a compilation and called it 2012 the online movie which ended up with i don't know 13 million views on it but it showed that this you know the mind calendar was not the end of the world and it's really the the awakening of the world as we know it so um, that was that was like one of the crucial points for many people yeah. in this awakening right now. And what you'll hear is from other people, the skeptics saying, oh, well, nothing happened in 2012. Mm -hmm. Really? Look at all the people that woke up yeah. and that began their spiritual journey. Totally. And look where, where they are now, how far they've expanded that. And what you're seeing and feeling right now is totally different than what you felt 10 years ago. It's It's growing and you can feel it. You can sense it. Yeah, the movie 2012 Enigma uh, by David Wilcock was one of the first ones I got into. And mm -hmm. that thing blew my head off early on, man. Yeah. <laughs> I had reached like a plateau, you know, and it was like, okay, what's next, you know? And then found that and 
that mixed with having um, different uh, angelic encounters and seeing UFOs and stargazing for hours and hours and hours. And I couldn't wait for the sun to go down daily because uh -huh. I was ready to go see, see UFOs. And then I got to the point where I was just asking to see them during the day. Right. I was like, okay, I see them at night. They, you know, it could be a satellite. It could be a plane. It could be all these other things. Let me see them during the day. Will mm -hmm. you please? And I'd send, I would, I would, I would send the thought out there. I would say it. And then they would start communicating telepathically. Right. Oh yeah. Whole nother level. Oh, oh you when you first saw when you saw your first ufo this this was um about 2012 now to where it's it was like it got in, it it wasn't one and then they left like it was intense like i was going out every night for hours so i was um well i was probably 28 mm -hmm. about 28 29 yeah 28 have you ever had this this happen to you where you see a ufo and you're with someone and you point at point at it and they can't see it only you can see it I haven't had that happen, but I but I I have had it happen where they wanted me to see it, mm -hmm. and as soon as I seen it, they disappeared. Mm -hmm. Like it was there, I seen it. I the the thought hit my mind. Oh, there's a UFO. He's saying hello. It's gone during the day. Do you have any night vision goggles? I seen you had some. Yes. I uh, I mean that right there. I've been. <laughs> I mean, early on, I was watching so many videos, and there's some interesting stuff that people are recording. These these are uh, they're called Ranger Yukon Ranger night vision goggles, and uh, you can buy these for like three fifty or so, and they're okay. But what I have it's the ATN Generation Three night vision goggles. That's the ones everybody says get. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's what you want, and. Uh, it, the difference is day and night. Really? Um, it's, yeah. it's worth, but unfortunately they, they cost a lot of money. I, yeah. I think I paid like 2,500 for these yeah. and just saved up and saved up because I knew this is what I wanted. Yeah, exactly. And, you know what? I'll tell you what, it's a lot better than watching anything on TV, <laughs> going outside with your, your <laughs> goggles and your laser yeah. pen, telling them to fire up one time. And it was about maybe three, four months ago. Yeah. Um, I'm facing the Gulf of Mexico out back in my backyard. I'm, I'm, facing in that direction and I look up and I see this huge cigar shaped mothership coming off the coast heading towards the mainland and as soon as I locked in on them with my night vision goggles they disappeared so this is the lesson I learned how do I record them well I, I bought this little contraption that you can hook up your your cell phone to and it works with any cell phone but uh what you do is you you put the uh where you where you look into right through here and it records your um ufo records so, it on the phone yeah i was trying to run cords dude to a computer yep. oh yeah it's crazy <laughs> so um yeah i you can actually record them the uh there's a new moon the best night to look for ufos i think is during a new moon because you don't have the the light pollution yeah. from any moon exactly I, I, I found that out organically too man <laughs> yes on the 21st on the uh, winter solstice we have a uh, quarter moon a waning qu uh, quarter quarter moon but by the 29th we're going to have a uh, a new moon and it's going to be a great night <laughs> for looking for ufos i can't like I, I could feel it now just remembering the expectation when all that stuff was new because mm -hmm. that dude that changes everything yeah that changes everything <laughs> everything when you're having yeah. you know disclosures happening through us everybody talks about you know disclosure oh, we want the government to come forth it's i don't think i don't know if it's gonna happen but it's happening through us like mm -hmm. you can go out and make your and, and you can go out and make contact and not not fear anything and have a beautiful encounter of our yeah. star brothers the you know the ones we call the angels in the holy text like they're oh, out yeah. there watching over us and they travel back and forth man and when you encounter that it changes everything it really does you know, i was I was 18 years old or so, and at the time, you know, I'm kind of dating myself right now, but uh, you know, it, it was legal to drink uh, at 18. And we were, I was living in New York, and we were on top of one of the Catskill Mountains there, and we we're having a keg party. We had the keg, we were waiting for the tap, so none of us were drinking at the time. We're just standing around the keg waiting for the tap, and up over an adjacent mountain comes three UFOs in formation. They stop. They hover, and then they take off. And uh, there was like seven or eight of us that saw it, and that was my first true UFO uh, sighting. And it just left such a lasting impression on me that, you know, it's, it's always been with me. And 
it's something that I, I want to keep pursuing further and further. Yeah. I believe that at night, many of us go on ships. I've had numerous dreams of being on ships at night. And I kind of question if that's reality or simply mm -hmm. a dream. Yeah. Um, speaking of the night vision goggles and all that, the, some of the first you know people's work that I looked into, I found Ed Grimsley. Are you are you familiar with his work? Yeah, he was at one of my conferences. I was going to ask you, did you get a chance to meet him? Yes, in uh, Los Angeles. Awesome, yeah, yeah. He was an awesome uh, um, guy, man. I had like, I was trying to contact everybody when that when this stuff, stuff was happening, man. I was like, I need somebody to talk to. I'm in the Bible Belt. I'm in Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't talk to anybody <laughs> around here, man. It was I had to go online. I had to find people who were posting videos about this stuff, and and I t I talked to James Gilliland. I talked to. Nate, who was his secretary at the time, uh, Ed Grimsley, talked to Ed on the phone, man, you know, and um, interesting times, man. And so that's why I love doing this podcast and having these discussions for people like myself who are having encounters and who are having, um, or who are just studying and they have questions, man, and nobody's, you know, nobody's answering them and stuff. So we just put ourselves out there to say, hey, this is our story. You know, if, if you have questions, you know, you can ask them. You know, we just put ourselves out there. And with that being said, I want to let everybody know that we are going to open up the phone lines. If you guys want to call in and you have a question or a comment or a UFO story or you want to ask Greg a question, go ahead and do that. The number is on the bottom of the screen scrolling across. And it's also in the description on the website and the YouTube video. Give us a call and we will try to take it here close to the end of the hour. So, um talking about that there was a lot of fear for me because i did see stuff when i was a kid right and so i would see ufos and or or i would see stuff in the sky i don't know if it was uf it was ufo to me but it would be backed by fire in the sky right as, as a kid watching fire in the sky at like seven years old like that scared the hell out of me right um and that was like i was big into monster movies but those did something to me because it was this thought that they could be real. Like people are getting abducted and they're not bringing them back. And like, that was like my biggest fear. So when I started having encounters and seeing stuff, there was this awe and wonder in me, but there was this also be careful, dude, they you know, they could, they can come get you, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, did you, did you encounter anything like that? Any of the, any of, you know, of, of the scary stuff at all? Or just even your own fear, you know, getting over some of that stigma? Uh, you know, after, having a stage three cancer in 2007 hmm. and facing death, nothing scares me <laughs> anymore. There's nothing to fear. So I, I know that one time I, I was doing, I have the, uh, an article on in 5D. I was doing this third eye mirror meditation where you sit in front of a mirror, you have a candle burning in front of you, the lights are off and you're focusing on your third eye. And what, what happens is you'll, you just get into that meditative state where your brain is basically in the alpha state. And what's going to happen is you're going to see yourself change into different forms. You'll see yourself as a woman, a man, old, young. But one time I saw this creature. That's the only way I can describe it. It had big red eyes and fang like teeth that was looking back at me. And I, I just looked it straight in the eye and said, you're not welcome here. Go back to where you came from go back to the light and I regathered myself and went back to meditating but you know during that one time I was doing that same third eye mirror meditation and this huge orange orb was just hanging out over my shoulder and it was just so awesome to to see and, and and observe but as for you know I find that when I was younger and I was also you know at that time watching horror flicks and stuff because <laughs> my friends were yeah Man, I, I don't watch that crap anymore because yeah. it just lowers my vibration. It does. And I, I can't, it's like watching the news. It makes me feel like crap. Yeah. You know, so. Because your reality is totally different than what they're showing on the news. They're, they're like trying to create your reality when your reality is totally against that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And we create it, man. Like nobody, I don't know people who they show on the news, right? I don't hang with those people. My mm -hmm. reality is different. I, I encourage, you know, love and unity and it, it's always destruction and death and chaos and then they show up with the answer so it's the chaos out of order they create the chaos and then they create the order so we come to our rulers who are giving us you know food and shelter and bread and water 
um, it's this weird dichotomy that they have set up, man. So to that's one of the other negative forces that we have to rise against. Like you said, television, outside influences. That stuff is powerful, man. Uh, the different music that we listen to. Like, I, I'm i a fan of, like, early 90s music, right? Anything 90s. And so I was into early gangster rap and stuff. And that stuff messes with you. You could try to listen to it now, but it, it'll it'll mess with you, man. People cursing and uh, talking about killing people and robbing people like that's the stuff i grew i was a kid i remember walking around the house reciting those lyrics i didn't know what i was saying but i was talking about cooking dope cooking crack because i was just repeating a song and my brother's like shut up man you know you know what i'm saying mama's gonna hear that and she's gonna take take our cds away and i'm walking around the house at like eight years old talking about cooking dope and i have no idea what i'm the meaning of it you know I, I found that yeah, I wrote an article on uh, music and spirituality, and I, I know exactly where you're coming from because I'm like the generation before you. I, I grew up in, in the 80s, and I played lead and rhythm guitar in several hard rock bands. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of my favorite songs don't have the most positive titles. Like one song is a Van Halen song, Ain't Talking About Love. It's the total antithesis of everything I believe in. Another one is by Night, Night Ranger, Don't Tell Me You Love Me. You know, mm-hmm. I love that song, but I think about how does that make me feel? It's the lyrics in I, both of those songs aren't going out and yeah. telling anyone to kill anyone. It's you know, but what what I what I sense and what I feel when I hear the lyrics. I'm not really listening to the lyrics. I'm hearing the flow of the melody of the lyrics, mm-hmm. and I'm listening more to the guitar as a guitarist myself. I, yeah. I, I'm listening to the rhythm, to the lead, thinking about the progressions that they're doing. And to me, it's more of a symphony of different things that are added together and what you get in the as the end result is something that makes me feel good regardless of what the lyrics say so and that's my message to anyone that's that's listening you know if there's music that makes you feel good listen to it it doesn't matter you know what (laughs) yeah what the lyrics particularly say as long as you're not acting out on them or believe in them if it makes you feel good overall go for it that's the funny thing about perception and how this stuff works is that we can listen to the same song or the same teaching and walk away with something totally different. I could feel it, I could walk away feeling great, feeling good, getting some type of different revelation from it and uh and somebody else takes something different away. So if you're honest with yourself and you really do get those those feelings, I'm with you on that, but I I'm, I think I'm with you too. It's like that's something where we have to be vibrating at a higher level to be like you know, these things shall not harm me, even though you're, there's chaos around me. Like I can hold on to the good and, and, you know, take good from every situation. That's, mm-hmm. that says a lot. If if you're honest, now I'm not saying just to say, well, I listen to it. It, it doesn't bother me. And like, you know what I'm saying? But if it honestly doesn't bother you and you are there, that's a good place to be. The thing you have to also be cognizant about is words are spells that's why it's called spelling you spell a word and these words do create spells so you be it's the energy that you're putting into the words that i think overrides the spell that's being cast Mm -hmm. so if you're if you're listening to one of these songs that you know are is deemed to be negative but you're not putting that negative energy into it it's all right don't worry about it you know I, i i i know a lot of people might say it's Pollyanna or I, I'm, I'm taking the, the, a new age look at that. I think that's bullshit. It's how you feel ultimately that overrides everything. And if it if makes it's, you feel if good. It's bringing, go if it's bringing good feelings, man, you know, whatever you can do in this life to, to bring good feelings, I'm for it, man. Whatever yep. makes you happy, man, and helps you get through the day, dude, I am for it. If it's not dragging you down, but be honest with yourself. I could be honest yeah. with myself. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. Um, but let's see. Um, I wanted to ask you too because we vaguely mentioned it when we we're talking about the the different um, elemental spirits, maybe the different uh, forces that are around us, angelic beings, uh, higher consciousness, lower vibrational beings. Like, um, there's a lot of places we can go with that. I, I mean, I definitely want to know your experiences with them. Um, but how how do we like contact you know those entities? How do we find our spirit guides or our spirit teachers? You know. Well, my, my spirit guide came to me in a dream, and uh, I've told this story. I don't know if you've heard it yet, or some of your listeners probably haven't heard it, but um, I'm originally from upstate New York in the Catskill Mountains, 
And I always had this affinity to palm trees and the ocean and didn't really know why. So about 11, 12, 13 years ago, I ended up moving to uh, Florida. And it was shortly afterwards that I had this dream where I met my spirit guide. And it's this North American looking Indian woman, long, black, straight, flowing hair, white gown. And she walks up to me and she goes, I'm your spirit guide. My name is Tamara. And so here I am. I can ask my spirit guide anything in the world. So what do I do? I repeat her name over and over and over again. Tamara, 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 Tamara. So many times that I woke myself up out of my dream. So here it is like three o'clock in the morning. And I know that every name has a meaning. So I looked up Tamara and Tamara means palm tree. So it made perfect sense why I had that affinity to palm trees in the ocean. It was mm -hmm. because of my spirit guide. But what you can do, and anyone can do this, put it out there. Ask your guides, ask your uh, angels, guardian angels, yeah. spirit guides. Contact me, whether it's in a dream. Show me a sign that you're here. Uh, and, and just put it out there. And I, I think that it'll happen when you're ready for it to happen. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be prepared. And you know, if it doesn't happen immediately, just keep working on your vibration, yeah. keep raising your en energy levels, and it will happen. I felt kind of weird because, I mean, that's 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 the approach that I took as well. But I, I can't lie. I did feel a little bit weird like I was begging <laughs> for I, you know, I, I would go out and see the UFOs and I would beg. I would beg, man. I would beg. But, you know, you have not because you asked not. And I asked for it and I got it more than I could chew at the time. But I got it, man. I stayed out there. I didn't want to move until I knew that I knew that something was out there, something for my greater good. And I, I kind of singled it in, you know, any beings that are out there that are watching over me, they have my greatest good in mind. Um, the angels in the Bible, those who are watching over, if you're out there, at least let me see you travel by. Let me see something, Sh you know, just say hello. And then I would start seeing them. But I would, you, it's got to be something you want, though, because, I mean, I've been out there with people who go out there for 30 minutes and they're, you know, their vibration's different. They're like, ah, oh, this isn't real. Uh, I'm ready to go and stuff. And I'm like, man, we just got out here. Like, you have to, we're going to be here all night. Like, if you want this to happen, and then again, I've been out there all night and we've never seen anything with people and then go out there with a couple people and see 12 ships back to back and within an hour, you know, you never can tell. But um, it's kind of like when I was young and I, I would go fishing with uh, my sister's boyfriend and we'd be fishing all night and uh, we'd, we'd be like, uh, yeah, you think it's time to go? Nah, the fish are coming around. They're, they're going to be biting and you wait and <laughs> yeah. wait and wait. <laughs> yeah. Even though you haven't had a bite in like three hours. Yeah. You um, just keep waiting and waiting and believing. And, you know, it, I, I, I can sense that with UFOs. There's some nights, I mean, generally speaking, you can't go 10 minutes without seeing mm -hmm. a UFO with night vision goggles. Yeah. Some nights you don't see any. Other nights you see, you know, 10 and 15 minutes. You mm -hmm. know, it all depends. But generally, the 10 minute barrier. Yeah. I don't have the night vision, but. I tried second best. I went out there with regular bin binoculars. Mm -hmm. I just took my binoculars out there. Sure. You can see so many more stars even with regular binoculars. Mm -hmm. And I would look out there and I would see I would see ships that I couldn't see without them. Just mm -hmm. regular binoculars. So if anybody has that, you can't afford, you know, the um, night vision Gen Three. Try try it out and see. On a night that's close, you know, close to the new moon where there's not a lot of light out there, away from the city. You got to go away from the city, you know, to see all this stuff. But um, um, talking about entities and stuff more, I love, I love, I love talking about this stuff, man. Um, with nature spirits and stuff, fairies, undines, pixies, uh, salamanders. Have you, have you had any encounters with, with, you know, with those while you know, meditating in the woods and things like that? You know. No, I haven't. Nothing. But I, I have a friend of mine that she says she flies with the fairies and uh, she's very into the elementals. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know several people that are, are, are like that. You know, I just, you know, I kind of, I, I look at people though sometimes and you'll, you'll see certain people that you'll say, you know what, that person's a pixie or that one's in the gnome family or <laughs> you, you look at like the point of the year. Oh and, yeah, you know, man. There was a guy today. It's funny you say that. There was a guy today at work. He's real stubby, stout. He's large. He's got a beard. He's growing out. And it's like, 
okay i've seen you before man you know yeah yeah you can you can just you know like like look at a person yeah. now here's i have this uh book on astrology and how you can look at people and kind of tell what their sign is and here's a great example i'm not sure sure if you're familiar with james hetfield from metallica at just, all just heard an amazing interview with him with joe rogan yesterday just came out Listen oh wow to it. i need to check that just out. came out but yeah go ahead but back in the day he uh he had this, you know, the, the long hair, and he had a beard and a mustache. Handlebar, yeah. And he looked like the cowardly lion. Yeah, definitely. So out of all the astrology signs, what sign do you think he was <laughs> or is? Yeah, Leo, right, is exactly. he? Exactly. Wow. He's a Leo. Huh. And uh, yeah, there's certain features that you'll find on certain signs that tells you just by looking at a person what sign they are. Yeah. That's, that's that's awesome, man. I could see that though. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try that out and see if it see if it works. Um, some of them it may it may be hard, but definitely the lion or the bull, you know, the ram, you know, these mm -hmm. th these um, would would be a lot easier. Um, yeah, so got, the book's right here. Okay. Like I said, everybody, uh, if you guys have questions, you want to get in on the conversation, this is your chance. We want to make this interactive. Give us a call. I'll tell you the number is seven two four. 444-7444. When you call in, put in the uh, ID number, which is 78643, push pound, and then your ID number will be one, and it'll put you in queue, and we'll take your questions. Okay. This this is the book. It's called Personalities of the Zodiac, and uh, you can you, can, you have to go to the guy's website. It's William Schrieb, uh to order it, but it's fascinating, and it really Paul shows Kogan's you. on there. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of personality. Here's another one that he wrote, uh, Dance of the Zodiac. Mm -hmm. I, love, I love my books. Um, you can learn so much outside yeah. of you know, listening to a video, which everyone wants to do. They want to take the, the easy way out. And I do that a lot myself, too, yeah. because when I'm working, I'm multitasking. I'm always listening to some kind of metaphysical interview or show. Yeah. At night, I fall asleep to, listen to stuff like that. And uh, Strange stuff ooh. happens when you do that, man. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's much better than falling asleep watching TV, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. I definitely fell asleep at night with earbuds in my ears listening to uh, Manly P. Hall. Just going mm -hmm. to sleep listening Me to too. it. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Manly P. Hall. There's so many great lectures that he's had. Wow. He's just a whole wealth of knowledge, man. I, I'm starting to collect some of the older books of his, and I just got one in today from... Blavatsky. Now, I'm not real big on her work. I I, I know who she is. I, I've never read any of her books, but um, I did get her book, um, The Key of Theosophy, and okay. it was it was written in uh well it was this version came out in uh, 1889. So it's like I posted a picture on Facebook. It's like holding a relic, this old piece of antiquity, man. I just like there's something about those those older books, and I think that reading these type of materials not just listening to it but taking the time to get quiet and just read does something too so i've recently started reading again where i would listen to a download or listen to an audio lecture i'm like you know what let me read let me let me slow down at least for a few minutes before i go to bed and open a book and just calm myself instead of because i'll go 90 to nothing and hit the bed mm -hmm. that's what i do and i'm like you know what i, I gotta <laughs> slow down I, you know i gotta get back to those days man <laughs> yeah you know i just I just received a uh, the the Anastasia Cedar series. I think it's called. Um, it's a series of nine books that I'm. I just received it today, so I'm looking forward to reading that. I just finished a, a book by Tracy Damron. Okay. Uh, a Trail of Feathers, which was wonderful. Um, highly highly recommend that book as well. But you know, I've got a ton of books that are in my bookcase that are I, I just thoroughly love. I, I I really love reading the Dolores Cannon. Yeah. Convoluted. Uh, uh, universe series. I, I love all the stuff. Like she said, it, it'll bend your mind like a pretzel and makes you think outside the box. Yeah. And uh, anything that gets gets you to go outside the box, I'm all for because that's where all the fun's at outside the box. Definitely, definitely, because it, it's real, man, and it's so it's real. And I think I think this kind of ties in with the music a little bit and the movies. Like the stuff the stuff we take in, it shapes our reality. Like, like listening to music because that talks about this kind of stuff, like 
at the time I was waking up, I was introduced to different hip hop groups that talked about UFO encounter that, that broke down Manly P hall lectures and put it in their music. And I would listen to this. I was listening to it in music. I was reading it. I was watching documentaries. The more and more that I listened to this stuff and was around it, I found this stuff manifesting in my life and it was, it was beautiful. Right? So I think there is a, a big part about that of like what we let in or like what we want. They, and, it's kind of an intention as well. Like I'm going to get as much of this as I can and I want more, you know what I'm saying? And I think that they can see that and they sense that and they know, and I think, you know, the higher beings will show up for you because they know your intention, right? They well, can that's tell. just like the law of, uh, the law of attraction, the secret, what you're putting out there is coming back. Exactly. You're, putting, you're putting that intention yeah. and it's coming right back exactly. to you. And it, it works the same with love and gratitude. That's why I do that walk of gratitude. You know, you put that out there. You don't do it though to expect accolades or a pat on the shoulder or anything like that, but it just comes back to you. Uh, you know, the more good you do, the more it'll come back at you. And sometimes it might take a little while, some people, but it shows you the, the law of, of attraction and how you can manifest instantly right now. It's, it, it's getting easier and easier to manifest. That's as, encouraging. As we merge into the fourth dimension and prepare ourselves for the fifth dimension. So, what we're seeing right now is a lot of uh, manifestation that's coming up on the verge of fourth dimensional manifestation and beyond. So it's, it's really exciting. It's so fast too. Cause like, man, I remember um, going up on this little retreat with a couple of guys and um, trying psilocybin for the first time and, and putting that to a, uh, you know, we tried psilocybin in a float tank and it was my first time doing it. And, um, we spent the night at the float tank shop, man. My buddy of mine owns one and did that. And um, we went and seen a healer the same day. And just, I had these intense feelings of wanting to be a healer. But it was it seems so far away. It's like, man, you'll never you can never be that. And it's like, no, I want it. And then like source was dealing with me and said, no, you're not going to be. You already are. And just showing me throughout my life of like my intention and the things that I do and the the intention that I put in my music. Like you're not going to be a healer. You already are. You're just gonna manifest what's already within you. Don't look at it like it's something outside of yourself that you want. Can I please be a healer? No, it's already within you. Those desires are there for a reason. That strong urge, man. And on that psilocybin journey, it definitely brought it out. And within man, a couple months, like it was something that I really wanted to happen and didn't see I couldn't see it happening. I'm not well spoken. Um, I didn't know if it, you know, people wanted to, if I was to do guided meditations, I, I would listen to my voice, you know, these different doubts that would come in, right, that kind of distract you. But I wanted it, man. And I was speaking it and I was telling people and stuff. And then I started doing sessions and started doing open sessions where people were coming in and people were just dropping the tears and people are, are, are feeling like God, they're encountering God while we're talking, having these sessions and stuff, man. And it's like blowing me away that like, man. So it got to a point where I have to check myself before I would do it. I was like, what are you doing? Like, because two months ago, this, there was no way that this was going to happen. And then it manifested like doing sessions with people that it was filling up and I was like, Oh my God. And I jumped into it really quick. And, um, there's power in that, man, that the whole, I, and, and so I, and so that's why like knowing the power there is there for good, but it's polarities as well. It works for evil too. I think that's why I'm so big on like being careful, like, like what type of stuff we're entertaining and stuff too, because the mind is powerful the thoughts, the words. So watch how we use them, man. We use them wisely, you know, but I hope that encourages somebody, man, that you can manifest it. You can make it happen. Like your dreams and desires, like there, there's so many layers of healing to it too, man. People feel unworthy. They feel like they've never had nothing and they always have to serve, you know what I'm saying? And they can never be exalted or they would never be trusted with money. You know, different things that we have, even me, I had to get over a lot of stuff because, you know, thinking that, I was supposed to walk, you know, the lowly road and be a poor, righteous teacher and the righteous aren't supposed to have this type of money and income. I had to get over that, those ungodly beliefs, man, and kind of kick that stuff to the curb and, and manifest it. And um, it, it's 
it's powerful, man. So I appreciate you coming on talking about this stuff too. It, 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 and having you on encourages me again, man, to go deeper on, on the places that I see in the future to try to manifest it and do the work to get it. It's a lot. It is a lot of work, you know. It is. It is. But you know what? I think. I think that what you're saying right here is spot on. That you were probably a healer in a past life. And that you can draw on that because ultimately time doesn't exist. You know, we're, exactly. we're locked into Saturn, Father Time, Kronos, uh, as ironically Saturnalia right now, mm -hmm. which is a week long of debauchery and yeah. whatever, the, you know, celebrated by the pagans years ago, <laughs> years ago. But, um, you know, this, this time of the year right now, um, that, that time doesn't exist. And if you were to go back, as a matter of fact, on in 5 d if you look it up on the upper right hand corner, there's a search box and there's a free past life regression MP3. And what you do is you listen to it as you're about to fall asleep and it triggers a past life. So it would, wouldn't surprise me that if in a past life you were some kind of medical healer, uh, some, maybe a shaman or something like that, some Definitely. kind of something with medicine, it wouldn't surprise me at all if you were to check that out. So yeah, give yeah. it a shot. Let Does me that is that is that completely random or is it uh does it work through your blood bloodline and stuff like that your ancestry well for me I, I only did it once and it was a fascinating past life that i had um i was a mayan elder and it seemed to be not i think it was in the area of maybe belize or so but it was during the spanish inquisition and as the christians were parading through my village they threatened to kill me if I didn't convert to Christianity and uh -huh. I lied and I said I would, <laughs> but I, you know, I, I lied to them because I yeah. wanted to pass on the indigenous knowledge to my children and grandchildren. Um, so that, you know, that's probably what led me to question, questioning yeah. a lot about yeah. Christianity as well. And right now, you know, my, my belief is that all religious texts should be four words, love everyone, respect everything. That's all you really need to know. Mm -hmm all that it boils down to yeah is, you know, love. i mean i i think i think i agree with you man because there's so many different um interpretations and everybody's right in their own mind that's the whole perception thing that i'm big on is the perception of like i've been around a lot of religious sects and uh yeah especially christianity but the different denominations who are like gung-ho with this or going and they <laughs> and they they all have something different to say man so it, it is hard to uh to really find out, you know, if you are a Berean, like if you do want to study the text and I, I, I find it beautiful, man, just all the ancient text, And, and cause I, I think, I think whenever I read it, man, it makes these encounters that I'm having. Like I read about those encounters in the Bible. I read about those encounters, um, uh, in, you know, the Testament of Solomon about encountering demons and encountering spirits and, and, and fighting them. And they talk about UFOs and like all of this ancient text. It really, everybody's, everybody has different things, man. You know what I'm saying? That, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, draws them and that they're called to. Um, but, uh, um, we're, we're coming up on this second hour. We do have a caller in the, uh, on the line and I'm going to bring in the, uh, co-host, which is, Mr. Leo Henry, I'm going to bring him in and we'll take this call. And like I said, if you guys have questions or comments, feel free to call in and join us over at mythesis.me for the second hour um, and just click on second hour. It'll bring you right to it. Uh, thank you. Thanks to everybody for supporting us. And we will continue over there. Take your calls, questions, comments, and talk some more about these spiritual encounters here in a few minutes. Peace.